Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord be with you. A very warm welcome to our Sunday morning online service for this, the third week of Lent. I hope that you are all well. Let us begin our service. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us come to our Lord God in penitence. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Wash me from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of the Ukraine today. We pray for peace and laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with my joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. reading from Luke 13, 1 to 9. There were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. So may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading this week comes from Luke 13, verses 1 to 9. And... Being completely honest with you, I found this quite difficult to 
study this week without my brain, my heart being focused on the war in Ukraine whilst reading it. Each and every day, news of these horrendous tragedies, these horrific acts on human beings, innocent human beings going on, all of the pain and hurt and suffering that people in Ukraine are going through. And then the people of Russia who are so unaware of the things that are going on, that are being deceived, that are being told so many lies in order to stop them from standing up against their leader. And that's what, or something very similar is happening in our gospel today. Jesus is out and a group of his friends come to him and they share of the most appalling story where Pilate has been and killed their friends. And he hasn't just killed them, he's killed them within the temple where all of their holy sacrifices have been laid, their holy slaughtered lambs are laying. They've killed these people their friends there and the blood of the two have been mixed and it's tragic and they're angry and they're disgusted and they wait for Jesus's reaction to this. And probably in a similar way, we've all been leaning on Jesus for our understanding. What do we do about this war in Ukraine? Heavenly Father, help us and guide us. And his reaction is maybe not what we expect. Instead of having self-righteous anger and putting on his armour and leading people against Pilate's acts, he talks to them about themselves, about their hearts, and about the sins that they commit. That in turning against Pilate in that rage and anger, they actually do more harm to themselves than they're doing to Pilate's men that actually committed these disgusting crimes. And so as Christians at this time, I wonder what are we called to do? How do we react to these horrible scenes going on in Ukraine? We're called to pray, to offer practical help in ways we can, whether that be sending finances, sending clothes, offering a room in our house to a refugee family. We're ultimately called to be a light in the darkness, to stand with our brothers and sisters across the world to support the people who are suffering at this time. It's not the easy answer, I know, and I know that in so many of our hearts, we just want to be able to do more. But to finish, I'd like to read you a small passage from a commentary I've been reading this week about our gospel reading. And it says, so just when you begin to stir up a fluttering heroic image of yourself in full battle dress, ready to wipe evil off the face of the earth, Jesus knocks us off our moral high horse. He brings us down to earth with a high bang, with a talk of fertilizer and a scruffy tree. He says, ask yourself, 
If you are like that fig tree, are you bearing good fruit or just taking up space? I guess I will leave that question with you all. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of the life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. King of the nations, we cry out to you now for the people of Ukraine. We ask you to rescue those who are vulnerable from the hands of their enemies, that they may live without fear before you all their days. Lord, have mercy. Prince of Peace, our politicians are predicting the biggest war in Europe since 1945. We simply cry out to you urgently to write another story in our time. Thwart the dark faults of evil men. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to peacemakers, seeking an equitable and less violent way. May politicians exercise the wisdom from above, which is peaceable, gentle, willing to yield and full of mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church of the Ukraine. Give our many brothers and sisters in that nation courage in this crisis, that they may bind up broken hearts and bring comfort to all who mourn. Lord, have mercy. You, Lord, make war cease to the ends of the earth. You break bows, shatter spears and burn shields with fire. And so we ask you now to save the lives of many people in Ukraine. Make a peace that is strong and not weak. De-escalate de this crisis. We hear of wars and rumours of wars, but you, Lord, are our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. Our hope is in you. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the mighty Son of God, deliver you from all evil and fill you with his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, you are more ready to hear us and forgive us than we are to come to you. Forgive us for the times we have sinned and failed you. Strengthen us as we seek to serve you, that we may follow you in the ways of peace and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Resistance by the Poet Laureate, Simon Armitage. It's war again. A family carries its family out of a pranged house under a burning thatch. The next scene smacks of archive newsreel, platforms and trains, never again, never again. Toddlers passed over heads and shoulders, lifetimes stowed in luggage racks. It's war again, unmistakable smoke on the near horizon, mistaken for thick fog, fingers crossed. An old blue tractor tows an armoured tank into no man's land. It's the ceasefire hour. God speed the columns of winter coats and fur-lined hoods, the high wire walk, over buckled bridges, managing cases and bags, balancing west and east. God speed. It's war again. The woman in black gives sunflower seeds to the soldier, insists his marrow will nourish. The national flower. In dreams, let bullets be birds, let cluster bombs be burst into flocks. False news is news, with the pity edited out. It's war again. An air raid siren can't fully mute the cathedral bells. Let's call that hope. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 
Sometimes we know the blessing of God through the kindness of strangers, those near and far. And sometimes we know the blessing of God through the landscape, through its beauty. Today, as we remember those who are living in the torment and pain of conflict in Ukraine and across the world, we ask that they may have signs of God's blessing this day. So using this beautiful Celtic blessing, we ask God to bless all his people. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all God's people in all places this day and always. Amen. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. Amen.